Hi Amos here with the Sound Potion Monolith Portable Amplifier from Japan. This is a fairly straightforward and, and portable amplifier, at least on the outside. It comes in a standard kind of DIY case. It has headphone input and output and volume control. It has a charging port on the back. But what's unique about it, other than the fact that it is a DIY amp, you can, you can buy it for, as a DIY kit or you can solder it yourself, and to solder yourself, or you can buy it uh, fully assembled, is that it doesn't use op amps at all, and it doesn't use 9 volt batteries, and it doesn't use a lithium ion battery either. What does it use? Well, I have one that's with the circuit board, just the circuit board, and voila, it uses all discrete components. These two little board, these are the two little amp boards on here, and the batteries are not AA, they are 3.7 volt batteries, giving a to over 7 volts of power input to the amp. And it it doesn't. I haven't. I've taken it off here, but there's a little charging circuit that sits where these jumpers go. So with that in mind, you can buy this, as I said, as a DIY kit, and with a pair of tweezers, you can carefully solder the thing together yourself, or you can buy it as a completed amp for around 35,000 yen, which is equivalent. If one dollar were 100 yen, it would be 350 dollars. So depending on the exchange rate, it's actually not too bad at all, considering that's that. that um, the guy who designed it is named Takenobu Kawada, a really nice guy, and um, he has he has one himself which he replaced these nice big caps. Which of course this is a DIY amp; you can choose any caps you like. But he put he found out he got a pair of black gates to put in his, and his personal model sounds really nice too. And speaking of that, with IEMs, I find this really really nice sounding amp. It, along with the uh, AL Audio RX, is one of my favourite uh, JH Audio Layla amps or J Roxanne and Layla amps. It uh, has a, uh, the design has a slightly, uh, very slightly, uh, you know, uh, bass and treble extended sound, uh, which, you know, makes it very sound really good with uh, balanced armature IEMs. But the other thing is it can power full-sized headphones quite well. It actually does an amazingly decent job with, say, HD800s and other headphones, uh, maybe even planers, although it is somewhat power limited, but surprisingly is quite good. So this is a, a unique little amp, quite neat, quite neat design, and of course comes in a in a fairly straightforward case. You get an extra back plate without the charging thing there if you don't want to use the charging circuit and, and just unscrew it and put batteries in all the time. You could also change the volume knob. Of course, is quite large, so some people might want to change. If you buy one, you might want to change that out for a shorter one. If you can get one that uh, attaches to the uh, the end of the volume control, the volume control is a standard kind of little Alps thing. It's it's all very straightforward in design. But if you're up for a in very inexpensive uh, DIY project, because the cost will be, of course, under $100, and you're very patient with soldering uh, SMD components of this size, then you might find this an, an interesting gift, especially if you're coming to Japan, coming to one of the Tokyo shows. Uh, Kawada-san is at that, uh, often can be found around that, uh, that table, if you've seen my show reports, where they have a lot of exotic and weird amps made out of uh, sort of in, you know amps in boxes and amps in Altoid tins and amps in all sorts of household objects and other things. The kind of we the weird exotic group. So he's one of those guys, and uh, he makes another a number of other amps as well. So definitely on my recommended list if you're interested in a, in a really neat and unique portable amp, which is all discrete without op amps. And thank you again for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments, and I'll see you online.